Hey guys, John Velasco here with VR Source. The concept of virtual reality has been there, but we've never reached that point of realism until only very recently. So this is our review of the Oculus Rift. I'll be honest, when I first tried out the Oculus Rift, the design really didn't win me over. I found it to be a little bit on the boring side, but the more I got used to it and the more I wore it, it really made sense and it kind of won me over. It has a minimalist design. Now, it's not stylish and some people might say it's boring, but everything about its design makes perfect sense. It's comfortable, easy to adjust, and has also integrated headphones. Those are key qualities in making it not as obtrusive as you're actually wearing it. Now, the easy adjustment is done because you have the Velcro straps on the top and on the side, so you could really adjust it any way you want. The fit is good, secure. The headset itself is pretty lightweight too. I also like the fact that it features integrated headphones, so it's not something you have to provide yourself. And they do a good job of providing an immersive audio experience. There's a little bit of articulation, so you could actually adjust them. And it just makes sense because it reduces the wire management system. There's only one single wire coming out of the headset. Unlike the HTC Vive, which feels like it's always moving around somewhere, but with the Oculus Rift, it doesn't really impede the way you use it. Another thing that I like about the Oculus Rift is that it has the simplest setup process ever. It took me roughly around 15 minutes to do, and there are basically four main components to the entire system. So you have the headset, which you connect via the HDMI port on your computer. There's the Xbox One gamepad controller. It's wireless, and you have to pair it with the wireless dongle that's connected via USB to your computer. And you have the remote, which is basically something you use um, in some of the experiences. It's, it's, uh, it's a way to actually navigate. It's a simple thing. And then there's the last piece of the system, which is the infrared positional tracker sensor. That's connected to the USB port on your computer. And basically what that does is that you slap that in front of wherever you're gonna be using the, the headset and the system. And it's used to actually track spatial movement and everything with the headset. So let's talk about the VR experience of the Oculus Rift. The displays in the headset have a resolution of 2160 by 1200 pixels, and they have a refresh rate of 90 hertz. And there are other sensors too in play, like the accelerometer and gyroscope that work with the IR sensor to provide real-time tracking and also spatial differentiation. So essentially, unlike some of the other mobile VR solutions like Google Cardboard or the uh, Samsung Gear VR, the Oculus Rift has that higher degree of interaction and movement. So basically, it's able to realize if you're standing up, looking to your left, looking to your right, leaning forward, leaning back, and also stooping down. Whereas with those other mobile VR solutions, it's pretty static because you're basically just sitting down and just looking around. It's not gonna be able to measure all the other stuff. There are actually a couple of demos that really showcase the Oculus Rift's VR experience. Now, by experiences, these are basically short demos, probably no longer than 10 minutes, but they really give you a good look at what the Oculus Rift is able to do when it comes to the VR experience. One of them is the initial ones, this T-Rex demo, where basically we're standing up, we're able to look around in this corridor, and then all of a sudden, this T-Rex comes, comes walking down from, the, from one end and is right in front of us. And it really feels like as if we were there, especially when the T-Rex walks over you, you can see every part of the T-Rex go by you. It's pretty amazing. Now, for these experiences and demos that I checked out initially, I didn't really feel too sick using the headset, and I was surprised about that. It wasn't until I started playing these first-person games, these space shooter games, like Eve Valkyrie and Elite Dangerous, where you're put into a cockpit and you're fighting in space and dogfights and there's just a lot of action and movement. That's when I started feeling a little bit sick, some of that motion sickness. And after five, 10 minutes of playing them, I definitely felt nauseous at that point. There's just probably just too much action going on there. And plus the fact when you're sitting down, you know you're sitting down in reality, and but you're seeing all this movement in, in this virtual world, it does cause a degree of sickness. Speaking of games, I got to play quite a few over the last couple of months, and the Oculus Rift has a pretty good catalog right now. They cover the scope, you have puzzle games, RPGs, action adventure, yeah, platformers, so a decent map. 
But for the majority of them though, I feel as though the VR aspect isn't really being utilized to its potential just because it's still kind of isolated in the way that you're just basically sitting in front of your computer and then you're looking around with the headset on in, in these uh, games. For example, like I said, E-Valkyrie, Elite Dangerous, the space shooter games that put you in the cockpit. You're just looking around in space for your enemies and that's about it. You do have these third person perspectives in some of the other platforming games out there like Lucky's Tales or Edge of Nowhere, which places the camera's view behind our character. But again, it's the VR aspect is still isolated to just looking around. You're not doing much else. And quite honestly, I find as I feel as though many of these games can be played traditionally on a PC without that VR aspect. But then again, you have other games that were built exclusively with VR in mind. And the title that comes to mind is Kronos, the action adventure title that makes it necessary for you to actually look around in this world uh, to see what's out there before jumping right in. Because most of the time, if you just dive right into a certain scene or place, you're gonna set yourself up for failure because sometimes the enemies are just too much for you to handle. And it's crucial for you to look beforehand, see what kind of enemies are around the corner so you could actually come up with a plan of action to jump right in. Like I said, most of these games right now for the Oculus Rift really don't utilize the VR aspect a whole lot. Yes, you're still looking around, you're brought into this whole new world, you can see what's out there, but basically I'm still in my seat having the gamepad controller in my hand and just looking around with the headset on. That's the extent of it. But things will change once the Oculus Touch controllers come out because now with these controllers, they're gonna give that higher degree of interaction in the VR world. And I gotta check it out firsthand in many of these upcoming titles like Star Trek Bridge Crew, where you actually have more fine motor skills and interaction with your hands in the game. So not only are you just now just holding a gamepad, but your hands become part of the game and that's gonna help to deliver an even more immersive virtual reality experience. So who's gonna buy the Oculus Rift? Right now, it costs $600 to pick up, and at that point, you know the only type of people who are gonna buy it are early adopters. For the everyday consumer, it's gonna be a hard sell, given the fact that not only are you paying for the hardware itself, $600, but you'll also need a high-end PC system to actually run VR. So that's another investment in itself. But these early adopters will really appreciate wh what VR is doing and where it's gonna go. Now, as far as gaming concerned, it's good. It's good start, but it's only gonna get better, especially with the introduction of the Oculus Touch controllers. And hopefully at some point, we'll see an eventual price drop on the system itself because there are gonna be some competing headsets that are gonna be coming out very shortly that'll make the Oculus Rift $600 cost really tough to buy. Real virtual reality is now a reality. And that's what we're seeing here with the Oculus Rift because it's only the beginning. Obviously, it's not to the level of what we see in many of these sci-fi movies. But the practicality of the Rift's implementation is an absolute step up from what we've seen in the past. So that's it with the Oculus Rift. Hopefully that gave you some good insights about VR and what it could do. So if you guys wanna learn more about this, you could check out our website, VR Source, your source for all kinds of reality.